We are back at it again. Welcome to another episode of the USANA Athlete Interview Series. I'm your host, Jason Nacy, and today we're talking to the talented Olympian Priscilla Loomis. Priscilla is a two-time Pan American silver medalist. She's a podcast co-host of In Our Prime, entrepreneur, and motivational speaker. How's it going, Priscilla? Thanks for joining us today. I am absolutely fabulous. How are you doing? Just living the dream, living yeah, the dream, right? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm super excited to chat with you because, you know, we've chatted in the past when, when we first started this, uh, started this partnership and yeah. I love your personality. I love everything that you're doing. And I actually, you know, did a little bit of research and found some 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 cool stuff. I'm really excited to talk about. Ooh, yay! So. Hopefully, it's all truthful and good. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bit of a a nut. I'm a little crazy, so hopefully, it's all good things. <laughs> it's all amazing things. Yay! It's always good to hear. So, first off, I I've noticed you've really been pushing this what you call the Olympic mindset. Yes. Which I love. Um, I'm a huge mindset guy myself. Like I love Ooh. reading books about it. I just, I, you know, when I was, uh, in high school, I, I was a high school wrestler. I only wrestled okay. my junior and senior year, but I remember my dad telling me that sports was 80% above the shoulders and yeah. I didn't quite understand what he meant. Yeah. And a lot of people say between the ears, right. Um, so I didn't quite understand what he meant. And as I've gotten older, it's like, yeah, I think he's right. But I also, I've tweaked it myself. And I tell yep. my kids that life is 90% above the shoulders, right? Like, uh, you know, it's, it, it's all about the perspective and yes. how you look at things, how you, how you react to things, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, it's kind of, a stoic way, I guess you could say, but you know, you, you can only be offended from people. If you let them offend you, you can only, Absolutely. you know, yes. so, so yes. I want to get your take on the Olympic mindset. Cause I know that's, you know, that's, that's really Thanks. near and dear Thanks. to you and kind of your, kind of your mantra as well. So let's jump right into it. It very much is. I created this Olympic mindset. Somebody had asked me to speak and I get asked to speak quite a bit. I am very comfortable in front of people. And I feel that especially younger kids, they really only listen to you if you are close to their age, if something eccentric is on you, or they're not your parents. So as long as you cover those kinds of things, and me being a very colorful, purple haired Olympian, I check a lot of the boxes. So I realized that when people were listening to me, people were really hearing me. Yeah. And so everyone kept asking me, how do I stay so focused? How have I done this? Like put it all into one thing, right? One little circle. And I'm like, I can't do that, but it is the Olympic mindset. So that's when I created this whole platform of letting people understand that, yes, you may not be training for the Olympic games, but everything that an Olympian does, you need in your everyday life all the time. And so there's so many different levels to it. So obviously the, there's the athleticism, duh, yeah. the 10,000 hour rule, but the 10,000 hour rule applies to everything. It's not just sports. If you want to get great at something, you've got to dedicate, put your time in, put the commitment in the focus, the knowledge and practice. That's it. And then comes, like you said, the mental aspect which now is becoming a very big deal. More people are starting to realize that mental health is very, very important. And I see it all the time. The older generation was just like, shut up, get through it, keep it moving, bury your feelings, bury them deep down. And so for me, I realized that my mental health was a really key demographic. And like my former coach always said, in between the ears, and it was, What's stopping you from being great? What's stopping you from pursuing it? And a lot of the times it was what I was telling my own self. Yeah. 
Yep. It wasn't outside sources. It was what I was telling myself and what I believed other people were saying about me. And so changing that narrative of what you want in your life really changes your perspective. And so that was something, then it becomes, of course, nutrition, respect of, of for yourself, motivation, courage, you know, time management, all of these things are incorporated into this Olympic mindset. And so I remember coaching one of these girls in high school and I expected a lot, excuse me, from these athletes. I wanted them to push themselves. I wanted them to have this Olympic mindset. And one of the grandmothers was like, I don't understand why she's pushing them so hard. It's not like we're all going to the Olympics. And that was the first time that something I had said was taken as a negative. And then I realized that not everybody thinks with this same logic. So I realized that I could take this Olympic mindset kind of platform and share it with the world. And so I am a big believer in it. And I do think even as I retire this summer, I realized that I have to take this into my everyday regular life. So I take this into my marriage. I take this into my podcast. I take this into my morning job and my cleaning business and my nonprofit. I take it in everything. So I love it. I do live by it. And so I practice what I preach. Well, and that's, that's the thing. I, I love how you talked about how one of your uh, athletes, grandma said, what is she expecting? We're we're not all Olympians, but it applies to life. Um, and that's one thing that I really want to touch on too, because I know a lot of people who who watch this um, have started their started a home based business or whatever. And you're a successful entrepreneur. So how have you, you know, because going back to to what that grandma said, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it 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 applies to everything. Like just the the work ethic, working yeah. you know, working hard, um, time management, finances being, making sure that one, you're surrounding yourself with good people that are helping you along the way, making sure that you're getting sleep. Athletes care about our bodies because obviously we use them. Yeah. Why wouldn't anybody else follow that? Yeah. Who, whoever came up with the hashtag team, no sleep is an idiot. Yeah. They're an idiot because at this, you have to take care of yourself. Yourself is what you're putting out there. You coming to the table exhausted, frustrated, that's not helping anybody. And it's certainly not helping yourself. So all of these things came into perspective when it came to life. And so if you're an entrepreneur, if you're, even if you're working for a company, you've got to take that same commitment and effort as an Olympian does with their sport, as you do with your business or your job. You want to be committed. You want to be focused. You want to time manage all of your meetings and all of your work. You want to give yourself that break, that mental health break of lunch or breakfast or whatever it is. You have to honor yourself and put give yourself that kind of love and commitment. And you have to you have to change the narrative. And that's one of the big things. Most people doubt themselves. It's like that little annoying voice in your head that's saying that you can't do it, but you have to change the narrative because why not you? Why can't it be you? You have to put that action behind that voice. If you want to go after something, then do it. But it's not going to do, you can't just sit there and be like, I want a million dollars and then not play the lottery ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And, 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 and that's, so I've had this conversation with a lot of people. So I've, I've headed up the, the athlete and sponsorship group at USANA for five years now. And I've, and I've learned a ton from just all the conversations I've had with that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's <Not a> awesome. <laughs> but uh, the, the one thing that I've noticed um, in, in talking with elite athletes is more often than not, they're just like, everybody else the difference is they they, they've got this mindset where they want it more and and i think that applies to entrepreneurs as well and i think that's why you've been a successful entrepreneur because i i'm sure and and we'll talk about this in a minute but i'm sure there's been several times where you didn't want to get out of bed or you just felt like quitting because you know 
people don't see all the work you put into it. It's not all glamorous as, as, as people think. It's, 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 it's a lot harder. If it wasn't so hard, I would be an Olympian. Like, let, let, let's be honest, right? And uh, easy won't ever get you there. Yeah. Easy is not going to make it happen. In, in anything. In anything. That's what I'm saying. Across the board, easy will not get you your success. That's yeah. not that's not the recipe for success because we learn as athletes and as entrepreneurs that we grow and we learn through the quote unquote failures. Yeah. So what athletes do is we fail 10,000 times for that one time of success. Most people aren't willing to do that. After five times, they're like, oh, the universe is telling me no. No, the universe is testing you. Yeah. How bad do you want it? As a high jumper, I every high jumper ends on a failure. Whether you PR for the day or you don't, the bar always falls. Yeah. You end your day on a failure all the time. When you go to the weight room, you're not going in asking for a light weight. The light weight isn't going to get you stronger. You have to push yourself. As an entrepreneur, I would love to sit here and pray that I get clients just reaching out to me. That doesn't happen. I have to make sure I'm educating myself. I'm reading books. I'm staying up to date. I'm staying current. Yep. I'm going out. I'm promoting my business. I am doing everything possible to make sure that my business runs smoothly. My clients are happy. My employees are happy. And these are all things that take time. So now you have patience. So all of these attribute, attributes come together. I now... I, I've, I've had a business and it failed. Okay, I'll try another one. Yeah. Just because there are roadblocks doesn't mean that necessarily that's the end of the road. I always say that there's a GPS. You're, when you type in the GPS, sometimes you have pit stops and it reroutes you. You get a little turned around, it reroutes you. But does that mean that on your route, you're like, forget it. I'm not going to the destination. Yep. It's rerouted me too many times. We're done. No, you keep following it until you get to your destination. In life, whether you're an Olympic athlete, you're an entrepreneur, or you're working for a business, no matter what, you have a destination that you've typed into your GPS. You have to be okay with being rerouted hundreds of times. Yeah. But so learning from those reroutes. Absolutely. You've got to learn from it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Now, let's let's go back just a little bit. Now, you're an entrepreneur yeah. out of necessity, right? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't it wasn't something that 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 you you thought, "Oh, I want to do this," but you have an Olympic I dream. Clean, yeah, I didn't want to clean toilets for just because it was a passion. Absolutely not. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's I guess one element that I mean, first of all, you have the Olympic mindset. And, and I believe that's that's why you're successful. But also, you couldn't fail, right? Because you had this Olympic dream, and if you failed, the Olympic dream wasn't going to be a reality. So you had the the added pressure. Athlete, not giving up on myself, you know. And so that was the problem that I kept seeing in 2016, 2015, is that every time there was an issue, rather than figure it out, I would complain. Yeah. And I didn't realize how, how much energy that took out of me to be negative and to complain. And so after 2016, I came home and I still wasn't signed. And I said, I got to change this. You know what? I can change this for myself. I need to make a way. And so I started my cleaning business. I went to like Target or Walmart, picked up a bucket, got some cleaning supplies, created a poster and a flyer and just started handing it out word of mouth, you know, and faking it till I made it. Yeah. I, it, it's one of those things where you mentioned earlier that it's not this, all this glam and, you know, glitz and glam. And I don't get sh box of, you know, clothes and sneakers shipped to me. I'm a 32 year old unsigned athlete, but I'm, I don't want that to be my narrative anymore. Yeah. I want to be this go getter warrior that figured it out and made a way. I wasn't going to fail on myself. I wasn't going to quit on myself. Are there moments? Absolutely. Where I'm like, man, this sucks. 
I don't know how I'm going to get up. I don't know how I'm going to keep moving. I have to just put one foot in front of the other. And I could not let down my country. I couldn't let down my family. And I couldn't let down myself. That's just not who I am. And so I had a choice to make, either continue to complain and dig myself into a deeper hole or allow myself to rise and make this awesome story for myself and learn along the way. So I chose the latter. And so, you know, creating the cleaning business was obviously out of necessity and it helped me train for the games. It paid for shoes and massage therapy and my coach's fees and, you know, training expenses and regular life expenses. It helped me. It really did. But then it also taught me that I can't block my blessings. So if something happens and it, and it presents itself and it could potentially help me along the way, I need to say yes to it. Um, and so it, I learned about balance. Training and you know working was a, was a balance. It was very difficult. I had nine, 10 hour days every day because yeah. I was cleaning for four to five hours and then training for four hours Yeah, and then travel in between, you know, and then regular, I call it muggle life. I still have errands. I still have a car payment. I still have to grocery shop. I still have to cook, you know, I still have regular life things. So it does become a balancing act, but through all those things I've learned along the way, I've learned so much about time and commitment and energy and focus and dedication to myself and surrounding myself with great people that support me, cutting people out who weren't adding things to my life, surrounding myself with music and television and even whatever I, I see on social media, everything had to benefit me. If it didn't, it was a waste of my energy. It was a distraction and I needed to get rid of it. So I think yeah. these are, again, these are all things that entrepreneurs can really learn from. If things are distracting you, time to cut it out. There's no if, ands, or buts. And it is black and white. It is. It's either it's helping you or it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's that simple. It, that reminds me of a story about, I think it was the British rowing team for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, they got hammered, a, I think it was like a year before, maybe at Worlds or something. And I mean, they didn't even, play. they might have been last place. Right. Mm -hmm. And as a team, they made a commitment. They said, OK, every every decision we're, we're going to make is going to be about becoming faster in the boat. So it's like, mm -hmm. OK, am I going to go out and have a few drinks? Is that going to make me faster? No. OK, what's going to make me faster? Sleep and recovery or, you know, they literally would ask themselves that question nonstop. Is this decision going to make me faster? Is this decision going to make me better? And they came back and won a gold medal at the Olympics. Like it was, it's mind blowing. And, and what changed? Nothing except for their mindset and, and their commitment and asking that question, you know, to themselves. yeah, yeah, their success. Absolutely. And sometimes they had to ask themselves is, and I, I, I want people to understand that sometimes it's, it's dependent on the person. So for me, my coach will say, how are you feeling? I'm like, I am beat. I am exhausted. I have nothing left to give. And she'll say, all right, you're off today. Just stretch. And because that's what I needed. Yeah. So don't again, don't compare yourself to other people's journeys. That team needed to shift their focus to a little bit more of the boat. Yeah. Of what was going to help them in the boat. But what's going to help you? Is taking a mini vacation going to help you? Probably. That mental rest? Probably. Yeah. Is that downtime going to help you? Probably. So you need to make sure that you're in tune with yourself. Yeah. That is something very huge. But I, I also believe that that is a question they ask. Do I need a day off? Like, is that going to help? So to your point, it, it, it does. There are things that you need and only... You understand that. But at the same time, as humans, it's easy for us to make excuses, right? Oh, do I need to get out of bed today? Ah, uh, you know, I'm going to sleep in today because I, I really need it, right? Yeah. So, so there's that, that fine line of asking yeah. yourself the serious question, is but this you know, going to help me? Or, you know. yeah, for you sure. You definitely know. <laughs> you 
know that you can sit there and be like, ah, oh, do I really need to do this? I can just watch one more. But you know, you feel a little guilty. Yep. You're like, yeah, I should be doing something else. But when you're, when you've pushed it to your limit and you need that break, your body's like, thank you. And you don't feel that guilt. Yep. So that's kind of like, that's, I guess, a little bit of that Olympic mindset, because it's very much like, we know when we exert it too much or, okay, we kind of need a, we need to just push ourselves a little bit. And there is that fine line of understanding that. So you are 2 million percent right. <laughs> yeah. So I want to go back to this 10,000 hours because mm-hmm. I love that book by Malcolm Gladwell. I think I it's think an great. awesome concept because he was able to, to give us something tangible, right? Mm-hmm. It made it so much easier to think, okay, look, anybody can be elite at something if you're putting in 10,000 hours. But what people don't understand is how much time 10,000 hours really is. Like that's, that's a, that's a lot of time. I mean, you say you're training four to six hours a day, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I can't do the math off my head and that was never my strong suit, but that's a lot of (laughs) time. (laughs) I've been high jumping since I was 13 years old. So you've got to think from the time I was a freshman in high school until today that I'm with you, I've been high jumping. I've been exercising. I've had days off and, but I've never really stopped. It's always been that driving force. Now, mind you, I wouldn't be where I am today if all I did was just high jump. There's a lot more that goes into it. And so when with this 10,000 hour rule, it includes failures, success. It includes rearranging, readjusting your mindset. So it's learning along the way. And yes, I truly believe in the 10,000 hour rules. I honestly feel, I also say, if you can fail 10,000 times, count it. If that's what you need, then count it. Yeah. And if you're only at 500, keep going. Because now it's like, all right, now I got to keep pushing myself and keep pushing myself. But the 10,000 hour rule, failing 10,000 times, it's the same thing. It's about patience, time, and commitment. It is the courage to keep going. And so is it scary? Sure, but that's good. Is it pressure? Great. I remember one of the basketball coaches saying pressure is a privilege. You know, these are all things that not everybody gets to be a part of. And so if you really want something that bad, which you've seen the results, people who are dedicated to that 10,000 hour rule have come out better. I'm not an Olympic gold medalist, but I am a champion in so many other ways. And I've learned so much along this journey that I'm so grateful for. And I, and I applaud my failures. I applaud my successes and I applaud my resilience to keep going and to keep rising. So I am a huge believer in that 10,000. And I love in the book that he goes through and talks about the Beatles and Bill Gates, like two completely different, (laughs) you know, end of the spectrum, but Again, it's the it's putting in the work when no one's looking. Yep. That's really it. Yeah. And and that comes down to discipline, right? It's that yes. it's do you have the discipline? Because in all reality, <clears throat> the one thing that we all have in common, and it doesn't matter, we all have twenty four hours in a day yeah. and yeah. we all have the ability uh, the ability to make a decision. Now, mm-hmm. is that decision helping you or is it hindering you? Is it helping your progress or are you taking a few steps back? Right. But That's it, the honest question that you have to ask yourself, you really do. You have to be completely honest with yourself. You cannot, you know, when you're lying to yourself Yeah. and yeah, people, I'm, I feel like sometimes I think I'm crazy because I talk to myself so much. I'm like, do I really want to, like, I'll be at the track, like talking to myself to the bar. I'm like, Oh man, I'm literally <laughs> going crazy right now. But it's one of those things where, what do you want? Yeah. What do you want in life? What do you want to get out of life? Do you, tr- are you truly happy with where you are? If not, then change it. And a lot of people are like, well, it's not that simple. It is. Yeah. It is that simple. It truly is. Because once you make that decision to really dedicate that time and energy into yourself, rather than the negative and the things that are, you know, soul sucking, 
anything is possible. Success is possible, but you have to stay on that track every single day. And that's when it's important to continue to educate yourself and to follow things that are in line with your vision. Yeah. So I love this topic, but I want to shift a little bit because I think there's, there's something you had an incident that happened in the past that, uh, I think changed the course of your life a little bit. I think it's a hot topic right now for, for good reason. And that's body shaming. Um, Oh yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about, about your story and what happened, if, if you're okay with that and, uh, and sure. how you've kind of, um, progressed through it and, 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 and conquered that. And I know it's still probably back there in the back of your mind. Right. But how do you, how, do, how have you gotten over that and how'd you deal with that? To be honest, I am so grateful that I even shared my story And I'm glad that people ask me about it because I never thought that anybody would understand it or find any kind of motivation through it or inspiration from it. And after that piece that I did with CNN, I got so much positive feedback and how my story helped other people. So I'm very open and honest about my my story. I started in the entertainment business. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be on television and film. I wanted to be the next Selena, the next Beyonce. That's what I wanted. And so I started getting into pageants and I you know, was top five. And so we got a reward of acting and modeling classes. And I was probably 13, 14 years old. And the first time, you know, that's the first time I was told I have a fat face. I photograph fat. And I was like, okay. And once my mom heard that, she pulled me right out. Yeah. She was like, that's not it. And so that's when it pretty much started. I was always awkward, you know, lanky, you know, like as, as a kid, you always yeah. have that awkward phase. And so I really went through a lot of different changes growing up as everybody else does. And then, you know, you go to high school and I didn't look like everybody else. And I knew that, you know, I wasn't developed. I was, I had a true high jumpers body. And so I could definitely tell the differences in that, but it didn't really hit home until college. And I realized that I started going to auditions and I, you know, auditioned for America's next top model and all these things. And I was going to auditions and I just wasn't skinny enough. I knew I wasn't. I saw the people that they were casting and I didn't look like any of them. And so for me, even when they would cast athletic models, they were very, very skinny. And so I went up to my nutritionist and I said, how can I be anorexic and still be a full-time athlete? And she looked at me so scared. And in my head, I was like, it's logic. One plus one equals two. If I'm anorexic and I can still do track, I'll be fine. So, you know, it was coaches coming up to me saying certain things, you know, put down the ice cream or, you know, you need to, you know, every centimeter that like every bite that you take is another centimeter. There were just little things. And I know that it wasn't coming from a negative or like a mean place, Mm -hmm. but after a while, the same common theme comes because that coach or that person doesn't know that you've already heard it 10 times, 15, 20 times. And so the tipping point was I was at Pan um, Commonwealth games in Australia. And I went to the bar after I was done competing. And one of the guys came right up to me with no fear and said, you know, I saw you on television. If you dropped a few kilos, you would have done better. And my friend was right there on the phone. She almost cursed him out. And I was like, that's, that's, it's okay. What other people think of me are none of my business. Yeah. That's one thing. And so I've always dealt with some sort of body shaming, whether it's the color of my skin, whether it's the wigs that I'm wearing, the color of it, it's my butt, my boot. It doesn't matter. I've always had somebody say something. And so I realized that throughout my track and field career, this is who I am. Yeah. I can't change that. I'm happy with who I am. 
I'm exactly where I need to be. And one of the girls, Katie Najat, she came out and said, I don't even know what weight I am when I compete. Cause I was obsessed with the scale. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I don't know what I weigh either on, on meat day. Nobody really, we don't, we don't weigh ourselves. We're not fighters. We just go out and perform. So I could be stressing about something that I could be the heaviest I ever been and PR, do a personal best. Who, who would know? So I realized that one, other people's opinions are none of my business. Unless you're my coach, I'm not really worried about you. Other people are going to say what they want to say. I could care less. And two, that I need to be a warrior. I really do. I need to, every time somebody even, you know, tries to say something, it's another sheet of armor. It's got to put your armor up and keep it going. And the reason I say warrior is because when you go to battle, that's what makes you a warrior. You don't get, you don't become a warrior sitting on the sideline. Yeah. You have to go to battle. And so now that I've been approached different ways about my weight and how I look, I'm one of the heaviest high jumpers. I'm okay with that. I'm good. I don't look like the other high jumpers. I'm okay with that. I have purple hair. You're, you're darn right. I don't look like other high jumpers, you know? And so for me, it was very difficult growing up younger, like as a young athlete, but now I just want to preach to younger athletes that nobody can tell you or do or say anything to you that should bother you. As long as you're comfortable with yourself, promote yourself, love yourself, show yourself kindness, eat the food that you want to, you know, make healthy choices and live your life. I just, yeah. you know, it, it's something that I just, I, yeah, I don't really, now that I look at it, I'm like, screw you. I don't care. Go ahead. Call me fat. What have you done lately? Yeah. But, <laughs> like one of those things. Well, that's, what's funny is the guy who came up to you at the bar, you know, you're a, a, a two time Pan American silver medalist. Yeah. <laughs> that guy wasn't even competing, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, but he has advice. I've got, yeah a really good buddy who has his, his mantra. I, I, I love it. It's it stuck with me. He says, don't ever take financial advice from somebody who's broke and yeah. don't take nutrition advice from somebody who's overweight, you know, and that's the I would take advice from anybody. That's not an expert in their field. Yeah. You're not going to the doctor's appointment to get your oil changed. Yeah. You're not you going to go to, you shouldn't go to somebody who's unhappy in life for meditation advice. Like these are just common sense things. Yeah. So if this person's coming up to you and, and I say this because there are life coaches, there are, you know, athletic coaches yeah. that are saying things there are, there was, there were coaches that said, you know, put down that ice cream. You don't know me. They don't know you yeah. and your journey. So unless somebody is there as your specific coach or helping you become the best version of yourself, their opinion is none of your business. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love, <laughs> I love that saying. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. 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 I'm sorry. That was a very long winded answer. No, no, the I, perfect. I just wanted people to understand that. Look, I've been through it. I yep. mean, I get it from every angle. You know, I get the question of, well, why do you represent Antigua, but you were born in America? One of my teammates said, you know, if you spoke like this, we would like you better. It's, you know, I was bullied for acting white. I got it from every angle, braces, you know, four eyes. I got it from everywhere. Um, I'm in an interracial marriage. We get looks and stares and the whole thing. Other people are going to be them there. It's not my, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but you shouldn't. And I just posted this. You shouldn't be for everybody. Yeah. Why the people that you attract should be positive, motivated, giving you life, giving you that feeling of the best version of yourself. Those are the people that are for you. Everybody else can kind of fall by the wayside yeah. and just know that that's okay. It's okay that you're not for everybody. You're elite. That's yeah. what you need to think of yourself. <laughs> so do you think it's getting better in your opinion, in, in your opinion, the body shaming? I know companies are coming out with, you know, ads using different type of models. Um, and I think companies are trying to take it more serious. I don't know if yeah. it's changing anything yet. What's your opinion on that? 
it's going to take some time. Yeah. I think what you see in the media is sometimes just fake, just to kind of put a Band-Aid on it, you know? I do love the promotion of health and wellness. Yeah. I love that people are taking mental health seriously. I'm glad that people are taking fitness seriously. People want to achieve just a healthier way of life. Do I think it's a lot has changed? Maybe just because I'm, I think it needs to change so much, Yeah. but we're not there yet. Yeah. No. Yeah. We have yeah. a long way to go. Well, cause, cause the hard thing is, you know, and this has been happening for, for decades, right? You've got this model who people don't understand how much retouch work in Photoshop and everything. And so they, they see now this. They are. Yeah. Now with social media, they see. Yeah. Now they're like, wow. And that's what I'm, that's what I love. I'm like, see, that's not real. <laughs> yeah. But, and, and, and that's the point when, when you see this perfect image, you don't know what went behind that perfect image. So stop comparing yourself with other people. Just be the, the best version of you. Right. Yeah. Like you said, what other people think, it's none of your business. None of your damn business. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. It is, it's very, very true. And it's something that I try to promote a lot. I really, really do of just truly being the best version of you. Don't compare yourself to anybody because people always ask me, like, don't you feel pressure, you know, when you see your competition? No, because I'm just much as I'm a badass as much as they are. Yeah. Like I have everything that I need to be great. I focus on myself. I, I really work hard. I'm doing everything possible. Why should I compare myself to somebody else? That's not my life. That's not my journey. That's not my goal. So for me, I just feel like we need to really promote this health and wellness of ourselves. And that's why I always say change the narrative. If you wouldn't talk to your friend a certain way, why would you talk to yourself that way? Yeah. You would never look at your friend and be like, you look disgusting. You shouldn't wear this outfit. That color doesn't look good on you. You know, you're looking a little big in this area. No. If you're a good friend, you're like, yes, rock it. You can do whatever you want to achieve those dreams. Yep. Be your own cheerleader then. Even in that inner voice, even when you don't want to always cheer yourself on because it starts with you and what you're telling yourself. Yeah. All right. So going back to health and wellness, yeah. um, nutrition, let's talk a little bit about nutrition. Why is nutrition important to you? One thing that I love about track and field and being an elite athlete is I love setting myself apart. When I walk down the street, people look at me, they're like, wow, you're in such great shape. You look great. I'm like, yeah, I work for this. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> of it. So when people see me, they see hard work, dedication, uh, t commitment. They see all of that just from me walking down the street. So when it comes to my performance and how I, how I look and how I feel, it all comes off of nutrition. So everything. And I love when people are like, oh, you want this donut? No, no, I don't. Mm -mm. They're like, oh, okay. Well, maybe, maybe not eating donuts is what is what makes yeah. me look like her. Okay. So when I have my USANA, my little thing, well, I drink water. I, I fill this up with water every day and I take it with me. I have my, you know, my vitamins. I eat healthy. I stay away from sugar and salt. And there are certain things. I'm elite. I only put good things in my body. That's yeah. it. I'm a big believer. I can't believe the stuff that's out there. So for me, like I have a cheat meal here and there, but as soon as I have a meal that's not good, I feel it. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm lethargic. And mind you, I only have like two cheat meals a week. Yeah. So for me, I just, I, I, when I do like when I'm on break, the nutrition that I'm like, oh, I'm going to go full in. I'm not, I'm going to go. I feel like crap. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. So nutrition is something that, I'm so glad I have such a good relationship with now. It's, yeah. It is a relationship. I love food. I love food. I love taking care of my body. And it's a relationship, meaning I take care of it. I nurture it. I research about what's better. So nutrition is a 
very, very big thing in my life. So do you have a favorite USANA product? So I will honestly say, I know this sounds really corny, but the health pack. Yeah. I love how it comes. But yeah. <laughs> it's awesome reel. I love getting it. I just like pull it out and I'm like, yes. And I take it with me everywhere and I feel great. The health pack is so, I have it everywhere in my book bag, in my purse, in like my track bag, my track, like it's just everywhere, you know? And so it has helped me a lot and it keeps me on a schedule and it's all packed into one. I love it. And um, I just got, um, the Rev Energy. Yep. Can't wait to try that. There you go. You're going to love it. <laughs> Ready for that. I can't wait. Packaging super cute, super cute, sleek little bottle. Oh, I love it. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, the health pack is something that I am, I'm really, really, vitamins are something that people take for granted. And I think grocery stores are to blame. Cause you can just walk in and there's like a thousand and you don't even know what to take. Yep. So I, I am very, very grateful that USANA took the athlete mentality and said, what do athletes need every day to help keep fueling them? And so I, that's my, that's my thing. The health pack. Nice. So dope. So dope. And it, but it'll probably be next. It'll probably be either the whey protein or the rev three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're going to have to let me know what you think of the Rev3 after, oh, you after you try it. Oh, you see it on my Instagram, so don't worry. You'll <laughs> see I'll create this awesome hype reel about it. There you it. go. I'll be super stoked. But yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, to try it. Perfect. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I do have one last question. Ask cause, away. Because I know this is, uh, I, I know you have three rules that you live by and- a lot of rules that I well, let it keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think there was there there's three. I think it was your last post that you did on Instagram. There was yes, the, the three yes, rules yes. that you live by. So let's yes. talk about those just for a second. Why why they're important to you. There it's you go. It's so funny because somebody just messaged me about the picture. So this is my post, right? And I look, I am I don't have a six pack all the time. I most of the time have a food baby. <laughs> Love my food babies. But I'm gonna read them for you right now. And I said this before, number one, I'm not for everybody. And I'm okay with that, as you should be. You are not here for everybody. You are here for people that support you, love you, and make you better. Two, what others think of me is none of my business. I've been preaching that yep, yep. <laughs> for forever. What other people say or think about you is none of your business. You could care less. What are you calling yourself? What are you telling yourself? What do you believe you are? That's what's most important. And last but not least, don't compare your life to others and don't judge them. You don't know what their journey is about. And that I realize we do a lot with social media. We're always comparing ourselves. We're always judging other people. Well, they have this, they have that. As much as what other people say is none of your business, what other people are doing is none of your business yeah. either. Focus on you. Excuse me. Judging other people isn't going to bring you happiness. It's going to, it's not going to bring you content. It's not going to bring anything but a waste of energy. Yep. So those are definitely three rules that, I mean, I've been talking about the first two this whole time, but it's, it's a way of life and it, it does take time. It took a, a long time for me to watch other people jumping and be like, oh, I'm not jumping that. Yeah. I'm like in, in my time, in my journey, this is, this is me. That's, that's not my goal. I don't have their coach. That's not, that's not who I am. Other people don't have purple hair and they can't rock it like me. So it happens. <laughs> people, aren't, people aren't badass warriors like me. It happens. So for me, it's, you know, I'm a big promoter of self-love, self-motivation and just love of others. And so anything that has like a negative energy that's going to take away from my focus is a distraction and I just don't have time for it. So I truly believe that everything that I do is to be a, the best version of myself and to be a leader for other people so they can see that it is possible. Do I have hard days? Hell yeah, I do. Some days it's very, very tough. I have to go jump after this and I'm exhausted, yeah. but I'm going to go have my rep three, going to take my time get to practice and enjoy the journey. So I, 
I definitely live by all the things that I, that I say. And it's not just from, oh, because I read it in a book. I've lived it. Yeah. I've experienced it. And I've seen the negative of it. So I have to make it as positive as possible. Priscilla, you're amazing. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm so glad you found USANA. I'm so glad. I, too. I got to give a huge shout out. Thank you, USANA. It is one of the things that was so hard for me. There are so many products out there. So, so many most of it's crap. And it's very difficult to find something that's safe for us to take. And so being certified and being able to trust the label and having great people like you to talk to and having a great support staff, the products are great and you guys have supported me and I am just super grateful. So if there's anything that I can say is USANA is part of that group that makes me the best version of myself. So I appreciate all that you guys offer and for making athletes a lot better. I will say that. Well, we appreciate you saying that. We appreciate your time. We can't wait to follow you. Um, You know, the Olympics are right around the corner. And real quick before we go, I know you have a podcast. You've got an amazing social channel. Um, Where can people find you? outside of Instagram? Outside of Instagram, you guys can go to PriscillaLoomis.com. That has all of my links to my YouTube and everything. And if you do type in YouTube, you can just type in YouTube Priscilla Loomis and I will come up. Can't miss me. It's a purple hair chick. There's a purple hair chick everywhere. And so um, those are the best places to find me. I do use my former name. I made a name Priscilla Frederick on Facebook, but you can always, if you just look up Priscilla and purple hair, I'll come up. There you go. There you go. (laughs) Thanks again for taking the time. I know you're super busy. Like you said, you got to go out and train some more. Um, Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I had a wonderful time. Thanks, Isana.